we are very pleased to welcome Regina here. Thank you very much, Stephen, for your kind introduction. I must thank the Foreign Correspondence Club for inviting me to talk about a subject very close to my heart, uh, the roles of uh, political parties. You know. um, just before the lunch, I was uh, chatting with Stephen, going back to the mists of time, trying to trace the beginnings of political parties in Hong Kong. Um, in the old days, there were the Civic Association, the Reform Club, which did not call themselves political parties, and maybe they, were, they could be regarded as quasi-political parties. Um, we'll come to that later, what exactly is a political party. You know? Be that as, as it may, um, the uh, emergence of the question of the future of Hong Kong um, the um, start onset of Sino-British negotiations on the future of Hong Kong in the 1980s triggered a new movement, a new political movement, and gave rise to uh, the emergence of different groupings uh, which try to find a way uh, for the um, work out the political future of Hong Kong. I'll come to that later. So um, maybe I should start with Which should I press? Could somebody enlighten me? Yeah. Huh? This one or here? Hmm? Okay, okay, okay. So maybe to get to the basics first, you know, you know my uh, in remarks are based on a lot of learned scholarship in the West on the roles of political parties and theories of democracy. This is just one of the books that I looked up before preparing my presentation. You know. uh, to get back to the basics, what is a political party? There are various definitions. Uh, one definition that I find helpful is the one put forward by Joseph Schumpeter in his uh, 1942 book, Capitalism, Socialism, and Democracy, which says that a party is a group whose members propose to act in concert in the competitive struggle for political power. Yeah. Um, that's why when I returned to, uh, from the US in 2006, I started a, uh, I founded a think tank, Cervantes uh, Policy Institute. A think tank is a civil society organization because it is uh, supposedly engaged in uh, public policy research. Mm. Last summer, last fall, I decided to form a political party because it's really somewhat anomalous for a think tank to engage in political activities in the sense of preparing candidates for elections and competing for seats, you know. So I decided the time had really come for me to make a formal transition, you know, and set up a political party so that um, the group of people who support me could take part more effectively in the elections, the, which will have a very important influence on the political future of Hong Kong. Jumping forward a little, let's look at the more recent wave of um, uh, formation of political parties or quasi-political parties. They have actually quite recent history. The, the, in the current wave, uh, going back to the 1980s, the Liberal Party could claim to be the oldest, but its predecessor is an organization called Cooperative Resources Center, founded in 1990, uh, 1991 by, as you can imagine, or then serving Executive Council and Legislative Council members, the late Stephen Chong, uh, Mr. Alan Lee, so on and so forth, who were all people with high social and economic status. Then the uh, Cooperative Resources Society was transformed, transformed itself into the Liberal Party in 1993. The DAB, now the largest party according to today's SCMP, 
uh, which mm -hmm. can boast um, close to 14,000 members, was formed in 1992. The Democratic Party in 1995, 1994, uh, which according to media reports has about 700 members. Yeah. And there are a wide range of uh, various political groupings, some calling themselves quite unabashedly parties, and some don't, but they actually take part in elections and perform the functions of a political party. So if I, go, go, if I could go back to some textbook um, theories about the roles of political parties, and let's uh, examine them against uh, what the political parties and quasi-parties actually do in Hong Kong. And this is according to the book that I cited in the first instance, Political Parties and Democracy, edited by my thesis supervisor, Professor Larry Diamond. You know. The first role of a political party is to recruit and nominate candidates for elective office. That is what we do at New People's Party. And that's, what all, that's the bread and butter of political parties, recruit and nominate candidates for elective office. And it follows, once you have candidates, you mobilize electoral support for them, and you drum up electoral participation. So I would suggest bull points one and two pertain to the bread and butter role of a political party, of running a political machinery, you know, preparing people for elections and then helping them to get votes. Yeah. Thirdly, structure the choices among competing groups of candidates along different issue dimensions. This may sound a bit academic, you know, but if you look at what political parties do and the events of the past, past year, this is in fact what political parties in Hong Kong, they do do. Take for example, the minimum wage issue. You know. On the minimum wage issue, different parties or quasi-parties, whether they call themselves parties or trade union congress, they have different positions. You know, and they structure the choices for the voters. The pro-labor groupings, naturally, they all clamor for as high a minimum wage as possible. Some even urge that the minimum wage should not just be a floor wage, it should be a living wage at the level where you can support a family of two. Mm -hmm. So they take one uh, very conspicuous policy position. And on the other hand, you have the pro-business groupings, whether it be Liberal Party or the economic synergy, which argue otherwise, that if the minimum wage is set too high, if you have to pay for workers when they eat lunch or when they take their holidays, you push up the costs, the business costs, and people will, be, will lose their jobs, you know. So the political parties, when they play to their interest groups, you know, um, they structure the choices on various issues for the electorate. That's how political parties help the public to make policy choices. Fourthly, they represent different social groups either symbolically or in advancing different specific interests. Some do so symbolically, ideolog ideologically, like the green groups. Some do so uh, to advocate on behalf of specific interest groups. You know, we have these such groups in Hong Kong as elsewhere. And then uh, fifthly, aggregate specific interests in the broader electoral and government coalitions. Again, this may sound a mouthful and somewhat academic, but I regard that as an ultra-important function. You know? Because in a normal society, not every member of society is politicized in the sense of being willing to pay a lot of attention to political issues or even public affairs, to study the minutia of every issue and then make their choice. Political parties actually act as the intermediaries between the citizenry and political life. You know? And political parties, if they are run by professionals, their job is to keep their ear close to the ground, listen to the different voices, 
And then, of course, political parties also play an active role in shaping people's opinions. And then after you listen to the different voices, what people want in regard to retirement protection, then you produce your platform and you run uh, for elective office on the basis of your platform, you know, based on the, the opinions, the different voices, different opinions expressed you uh, build them into your electoral platform. Naturally, different political parties will cater to different social groups that they represent and uh, the volitions of different interest groups. You know. And I think that's uh, where this function is uh, very important. And that's where you see the SAR government, our current administration, is having a lot of difficulty such as in the drawing up of the budget, which the financial secretary is supposed to have spent months listening, conducting public consultation. How come the financial secretary came up with a budget which is so out of line with uh, public opinion? You know, if you were running, if Steve, if you were running a political party, you would be extra careful not to do that because you would lose your votes. You know? So I think political parties have a vested interest in making sure that uh, they take into account closely the views of their core constituents and put forward a platform which give them a fighting chance of success. Now the sixth function I'm square, bracket, square bracketed. According to all political scientists, this is the most important function. The, the function of the prime function of a political party after running for office is to form government. You know? But I've square, bracket, square bracketed it in this presentation because this will not happen in Hong Kong because of the constitutional framework in our basic law. You know? Because under the basic law, the chief executive who may in due course be uh, selected by election in Hong Kong, you know, will still have to be appointed by the central authorities, and so will his or her principal officials. You know. So um, the, a political party would stop at that point. You know. A political party in Hong Kong cannot automatically form a government after winning even a majority of seats in LegCo. But the basic law does not preclude the central government from appointing leaders of the political party to, uh, to the executive branch, in my view. You know. And then the next function is uh, a political party uh, acts to integrate citizens more broadly into the nation state stroke society and its political games. You know. Politics is not everybody's cup of tea. Not every member of society have the time or the, the aptitude for politics. It's really for the professionals uh, to uh, build their platforms, you know, to connect with the people and to integrate the citizenries into the, uh, a city or a, a nation's political life. And there are also you know, broad functions of political parties. Of course, they play a broad representative role in the sense of interest articulation or aggregation of policy and formulation. They also play a very important institutional role, recruitment of political leaders and organization of parliament and government. And that's where we see a potential uh, problem with political parties. Sometimes political parties could become too engrossed with this institutional function just grooming their own leaders, you know, uh, or the party hopefuls, too preoccupied with climbing the political ladder within their parties and uh, running for organizing campaigns for elected office, uh, forming coalitions, you know, dealing with the uh, political machinery to the neglect of policy formulation and picking up experience in running government, you know. I have a Japanese friend who actually said to me that could be the problem with the current Japanese government, that uh, they have 
a prime minister every year, you know, that cabinet changes every year. And then you have people at the helm who are more skilled in the political games than in the day-to-day -day administration. I'm just quoting from a Japanese friend. This is not my opinion. Let me make very clear. You know. And then the, again going to Western typology. You know, I, I'll just speak for a few more minutes and then let, let you ask uh, questions. There, we have all these different configurations of political parties in Hong Kong. But of course, I will refrain from naming names. We have parties of individual representation. These are parties that simply articulate the demands of specific social groups. And then we have parties of social integration, parties which have well-developed organization and provide a variety of services to members encapsulating them within a partisan community in exchange for, for their loyalty in the form of votes during the times of election or financial support. You know. But we also, at a higher level, parties of total integration, which have more ambitious goals of taking over the driving seat and radically transforming societies and demanding the full commitment of members. Do we have such parties in Hong Kong? Steve, you hinted at one yeah, during our cocktail chat, which is an underground party in Hong Kong. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have cadre parties led by individuals with high social economic status. You know, these are really elitist parties. But do they reach down to the grassroots? Then, but then we also have mass parties, which could mobilize broad segments of the electorate through the development of large and complex organizations. We have such parties in Hong Kong. We do have them. You know? And then parties could be organized according to their electoral strategy, social representation, so on and so forth. You know? I mean, I could go on, you know, but I think I'd like to stop here because this is just to you know, get the discussion going. You know, by drawing on Western theories of parties and democracy and typology, and maybe we could talk about whether we have such parties in Hong Kong and how far they could go within our political framework. So I just stop there. Thank you very much indeed.